In this session, we will study about different built-in functions which can be used to handle tuple inside your Python program. So now let us start. We will initially see this program where we will demonstrate some of the built-in functions defined in Python for handling tuples. So initially I have created a tuple. The name of the variable is tuple1 with some integer values as shown here. And the first print statement, I'm calling the built-in function len to find out how many elements are there in tuple one. So now if you count, you can see there are six elements inside this tuple. So this print statement is going to print six as the result. The second print statement, I have just called a built-in function called tuple without any value given as argument. In this case, this will return an empty tuple, right? So it will create a tuple without any value inside it. Now the third print statement, we are calling the same built-in function tuple, but at this point of time, I am giving some argument value inside it, right? So here you can see I have given a string inside built-in function tuple. So this built-in function tuple will create a tuple with each character inside this string as a separate element inside the tuple. So the tuple will look like this. The first element will be A, then a comma will be there. The second element will be E. The third element will be I, right? It will go like that. So this will be the resulting tuple. Now in the fourth print statement, you can see again I'm calling the inbuilt function tuple, but this time the argument is a list. You can see the square bracket, right? It's a list with four value inside it. So what this function will do, it will convert this list into a tuple. So the result will be 11, 12, 13, and 14. So in this way, you can convert a list to a tuple by using the inbuilt function called tuple. Now in the next print statement, we are trying to create a tuple by using the range function. Now when we call range function with argument 5, the result is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, up till 4. These are the values that is generated by this range function. Now over on top of this value, a tuple will be created by this function. So the output is going to be a tuple with values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that will be printed out. And in the last print statement, I'm calling the input function count on variable tuple1 to find out how many times the value 20 is appearing inside this tuple. So you can see in tuple 1, value 20 is appearing two times. The last print statement will print the result as 2. So now let me run it. So now you can see the result. The first built-in function len will identify total number of elements inside tuple 1. So here you can see we have six elements and that is why the print statement prints the result as six. In the next statement, you can see I'm calling built-in function tuple with no arguments inside it. A blank tuple will be created. So you can see here without any value, a blank tuple is printed out. Now in the seventh statement, I'm calling the tuple function to create a tuple with this string. Okay, so the string is A E I O U. So based on this string value, a tuple will be created and you can see the output over here. Now in the next statement, I'm calling the tuple function to create a tuple, but this time the input is a list. So based on the values in this list, a new tuple will be created and it will be printed over here. Now in the next statement, you can see using the range operator, I will be generating some values over here. So it will be from zero to four. And on top of that value, you have to create a tuple, right? So this tuple function will do that. And then you will get this tuple as the result. And in the last print statement, you can see the count built-in function will count how many times 20 is coming inside tuple 1. So here you can see 20 is coming two times. So the result is 2. So now let us continue. Now in the first print statement, I'm calling built-in function called index with the tuple, tuple 1. And this function index will return the index value of 18, which is stored inside tuple 1. So here you can see we have the value 18 over here and the index value for 18 is 4. So this print statement will print the result as 4. Why? Because value 18 is stored inside tuple 1 at index value 4. In the next statement, you can see I'm trying to sort 
the value inside a tuple. So for that you can use the inbuilt function called sorted and you have to give the tuple which you have to sort as the parameter to it. So now this sorted function will sort the content of tuple 1. So once you sort it you can understand the first value will be 2, the second value will be 10 and after that you will have 18, 23, then 57, 78 and finally 100 right so this will be the result but there is a small twist to it output of this sort function will not be a tuple it is actually a list right so even though you give this tuple as the input for sorted function the output that you get is a list with a square bracket and you also should know that the value of tuple 1 will not be changed it will just create a sorted list the value of new sorted list will be loaded into list 1 after that if i try to print the value of tuple 1 you will see the same value that you see over here right because value of tuple 1 didn't change and after that you can print the value of list 1 you will see this as the output okay the sorted values so please remember that when you call this function sorted over a tuple the result will be a list if you want the result as a tuple itself you can use the typecast function so when i run the program i will show you how to do that now after that i have three more print statement here we are using built-in function which is really easy for you men will identify the lowest values inside tuple one right so the result is going to be 2 max will store the highest value stored inside tuple 1 so here you can see the answer is going to be 100 so that will be printed out and the last print statement will add all the elements inside tuple 1 okay and the result whatever it is for example x that will be printed out so now let us run this so now our program is ready so let me run it so you can see the result so first you can see the built-in function index will identify what is the index value for value 18 stored in set tuple so you can see 18 is coming at index value 4 and that is printed out over here next i am calling sorted function over tuple 1 so the values inside tuple 1 will be sorted and the resulting list will be stored into list 1 after that i am printing the content of tuple 1 you can see tuple 1 remains the same it starts with 57 goes until 100 right so the value inside tuple 1 is not changed by using the function sorted so sorted function will just sort the values and store the result into a new list which is called list one the next print statement i am printing list one you can see the content of list one is sorted and how do you understand this is a list you see this is square bracket right so the, what you have here is a list and what you have above is actually the tuple and after that i am trying to print min max and sum of tuple 1 you can see the result is 200 and 288 when i explain this program i have told you that if you want to sort a tuple and store the sorted result as a tuple itself we can actually do it now for that you have to do something in this statement okay so this is where you are sorting it once this sorted function creates a list of sorted elements you can use the typecasting function called tuple and put this entire thing inside it so now what happens in this statement sorted will take all the values from tuple 1 it will sort it will create a list now this tuple typecasting function will convert that list back to a tuple again and it will be stored into variable list 1 list 1 is just a name you don't have to change it so after this when you print list 1 list 1 will also have rounded bracket which means now it is a tuple so now let me just save it and run it you can see the result now tuple 1 is a tuple and after you sort you again create a tuple now let us go back to our slides now with this program we will learn some new technique how to assign values using tuple variables so tuple can be used to pack and unpack values together okay so we will understand that when we reach here now we will start in the first statement you can see i am assigning two variables n1 and n2 with initial value 10 and 20 so you can do this in one single statement so value 10 
will be copied into n1 and value 20 will be copied to n2 and after that if you print the value of n1 and n2 the result will come as 10 and 20. Now in the next example you can see this is where you can pack a set of values into a tuple and later you can unpack this tuple into individual variables right so let us see how that is done now here you see if you want to store the name roll number and subject of a student together you can store this value as a tuple into a variable record so this record now has three values inside it psi 45 and cs later in your program if you want to separate them into individual variables this is why i told you you can pack and later you can unpack it so if you want to unpack this tuple into individual variables you can do like this you just have to write three variable names name role and subject then you have to just put an equal to you have to assign this to a tuple called record so now what will happen the first value inside record will be stored into name so psi will be stored into name 45 will be stored into role cs will be stored into subject and now you can use these variables individually to process psi 45 and cs with whatever logic that you want so you can see in the next line i'm just printing name role and subject in the output it will come as psi and then you will have a space after that 45 then you will have a space and after that it will be printed as cs when you unpack your tuple you have to be very careful the number of variables that you give on the left side should exactly match the number of records inside a tuple so if you write like this name comma role is equal to record this will give an error why because inside record you have three values right you have psi you have 45 and you have cs and to collect these values there are only two variables over here so this doesn't match so that is why python will give error so when you want to unpack a particular tuple you have to make sure that on the left side of the assignment that is equal to you have to give equal number of variable names separated by comma in the next example you can see you can also provide expressions inside a tuple so first the mathematical expression will be evaluated and then the answers will be loaded into the corresponding variables on the left side of the assignment so here you can see you have n1 and n2 and on the right side i have 10 plus 20 comma 40 plus 50 so here first this mathematical expression will be evaluated and the result 30 will come over here after that this expression will be evaluated value 90 will be coming over here and after that value 30 will be stored into n1 and value 90 will be stored into n2 and after that when you print the value of n1 and n2 the result will come as 30 and 90 so now let us run this so now we have the program ready so let me run it so here you can see the first print statement it is printing value of n1 as 10 and n2 as 20 you can see that's the first line printed out now in the second print statement you can see i am unpacking the values inside record tuple and each value is loaded into name, role, and subject respectively. And after that, when I print name, role, and subject, you can see the result is coming as psi, 45, and cs. Now in the last example, I am adding 10 plus 20, 30 will be stored into n1, 40 plus 50, 90 will be stored into n2. After that, when you print n1 and n2, you can see the result 30 and 90. Now, just to show you, I am going to remove one variable name from here so now you see we are expecting an error so what is the problem here the record tuple has three elements inside it and once you unpack it on the left side there are only two variables to receive that value and so the number of variables and the value in statement six doesn't match okay so now let me save it and run it you can see you got an error so what it says too many values to unpack so lhs should have same number of variables lhs is left hand side so for this assignment left side you should have equal number of variables 
to handle all the values on the right side. So you should give one more value here, name, you put a comma, okay? And now if I save it and execute it, it will work properly. So now let us continue. Now with the help of this program, we are trying to learn the concept of nested tuple. So what I mean by nested tuple is that we have tuples inside another tuple. Here in this program, we are storing the roll number, the name and total mark for each student. So here you can see I am storing the record of four students for Geeta, Ram, John and Samir. So the first number 20 is the roll number. After that, you have the student name. And after that, 95 is the total mark that Geeta has scored. So similarly, we have 21 Ram 87. 22 john 94 something like that so our aim in this program is to print the value stored inside this tuple called student tuple that is why i have named it as st so the output of the program should come like this okay so i should have roll number then name then mark and under this you should print like 20 gita 95 then 21 ram 87 22 john 94 and 23 samir 75 this is the output that we want this program to give us so let us see how that is done so now let me write the index values for elements inside student tuple as far as student tuple is concerned this entire subtuple is the first element 21 ram 87 is the second element it goes like that so for this entire subtuple the index value is zero and for ram is stored in index value one for john the record is stored in index value two and for samir is stored in index value 3. Now if you come into the element at index value 0 you again see a tuple inside it and it has three elements. So we have the concept of sub index. Okay so 20 is available at sub index 0, Gita is available at 1, 95 is available at 2. So similarly I will write the index value of the other three people. So now before we start one last thing, if I want to access this value 87, how can I do that? I have to write st, that is the name of the variable. Then I have to write the first index value. You see the value 87 is coming at index value 1 inside student tuple. So the first level of index for accessing 87 is going to be 1. And now inside that subtuple, 87 is available at position 2. So the next level of index you have to give position 2. Now if you print the value of this, the output will be 87. So with this index value pair, now we can access any element inside this subtuple. So we will be using that to print this result. Okay, so now let us start. Now the first print statement is going to print a roll number. So here you can see roll number will be printed. After that, I have written a slash T. This is a special character combination for printing a tab space. When you press the tab key on your keyboard, you can understand it will move eight spaces to the right. So now when you see a tab space, eight spaces will be left out. After that, name will be printed. So name is printed to the output. Again, you have a slash T, so space will be printed. And after that, I will print mark. So this first line is completely done. Now using this for loop, I'm going to print roll number, name and mark accordingly. So now let us see how it is done. I have used a range operator here to work with zero to length of student tuple. Okay, now what is the length of student tuple here? It has four elements. This entire thing is treated as one element. Okay, so you have four student record inside ST. So length of student tuple is four. So this is zero comma four. So range operator will produce value zero, one, two, up till three. So now the first value zero 
will be loaded into i so now i have the print statement which actually prints each student record one at a time okay so my first thing is to print the record of Gita. so now let us see how it is done so right now you should know the value of i is zero because zero is loaded into i so now let us see this print st of the value of i is zero okay so zero zero so now what is zero 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 so that is 20 okay so value 20 will be printed after that i have slash t so space will be given now i am trying to print st value of i is zero and after that i have one now what is zero one zero one is gita so now gita will be printed after that i have slash t again eight space will be printed now i am trying to print st value of i is zero sub index two now the value available inside student tuple at position 0 2 you can see at 0 2 we have 95 so now 95 will be printed once the print statement is done the control will come back to 4 now the next value 1 will be loaded into i so right now the value of i will be 1 so i will just change this so now we will be printing st1 of 0 st1 of 1 and st1 of 2 so now you can see 1 of 0 is 21 1 of 1 is ram and 1 of 2 is 87 right so in the next line it will print 21 ram and 87 now again the control will come back to 4 2 will be loaded this time we will be printing 20 value available at 21 and value available at 22 so now 22 john 94 will be printed then for loop will work for the last value 3 and then 23 samir and 75 will be printed so now let us run this okay so now let me run it the first print statement will print roll number name and mark okay so you can see roll number name and mark and after that all four student records are printed by this print statement inside for loop right so for loop will work four times from 0 to 3 and it will print out each student record one at a time so now let us continue in this program we will study how to swap two numbers without using a temporary variable using tuple we have actually studied this in our first chapter so we were actually using tuple at that point of time if i have the first number stored inside fnum and the second number stored inside snum okay so this is the first number and second number so if i store 10 and 5 inside it once my program finishes the value 5 should be loaded into fnum and value 10 should be loaded into snum so this is what we call as swapping two numbers okay so our program starts over here now i will enter the first number 10 and it is copied into fnum in the next statement i will input value 5 and it will be copied into snum okay so right now we have these two values stored inside fnum and snum now after that i will just uh, print before swapping i will print the value of fnum and snum so in the output you will see the result as 10 and 5 for fnum and for snum okay and after that to swap these two numbers with tuple it's really easy you just have to write this one statement fnum comma snum is equal to snum comma fnum so now from this tuple the value of snum will be moved into the first variable on the left side so fnum now will have value stored inside snum so now 5 will be moved into fnum and after that the value stored in fnum will be copied into snum so the value inside fnum will be moved into snum so now you see the values are interchanged after that you will print after swapping and in the last print statement when you try to print the value of fnum and snum you can see now it is coming as 5 and 10 so now let us run this so now our program is ready so let me run it now our program will ask for the first number i will enter 10 it will ask for the second number i will enter 5 and after that my program will first print the number as such so first number is 10 and second number is 5 after that i will do the number swapping 
okay so the value of s num will move into f num and value of f num will be moved into s num and after that when you print the value of first number and second number you can see the values are changed now it is 5 and 10 so now let us continue in this program we are trying to separate the username and domain name from a tuple which have a set of students email id inside it so we have a tuple called the email it will have the email ids of many students now we can see inside the email so that is a tuple which is used to store the email ids of all our students so we have a student called Gita and her email id is geeta at gmail.com and the next student email id is sita at outlook.com and the last student's email id is hari at yahoo.com so our aim is to separate the username and domain name for each of these email ids and store all the usernames into one tuple and all the domain names into another tuple so we have created two more tuples the first tuple is t user it should accept only the username so you can understand the username is the name before this at the rate symbol right whatever you store before it so the username for the first email id is Gita. username for the second email id is sita and username for the last email id is hari so we have separated all the usernames from this email and stored into a separate tuple we also have another tuple called t domain that is tuple for storing domain names and you know that domain name is something that comes after this at the rate symbol right so after at the rate you have gmail in the first element of the email so you will have here gmail.com the second student sita is having her email in outlook.com so that is her domain name outlook.com and the last student have his email at domain yahoo.com so this is our input for this program and from this input I have to create two tuples like this so these two tuples are our output where we have separated the username and password into two separate tuples so now let us see how our program does that so initially I have created three empty tuples right you can see the email is for collecting all the email details of the students and then we have t user which will store all the usernames and we have t domain which will store all the domain names for the email addresses stored inside t email now in the next statement i will ask how many student records you want to input into t email so let us say i enter three over here so now i have my for loop which will help me to enter one student record at a time to the tuple so now you see this for loop will work three times right for zero one and two because value of n is three now now inside my for loop i will print email id of the first student in the next statement you can give the input from your keyboard so i will type the email id of the first student geeta at gmail.com this will be stored into variable email and we have studied before if you want to append this value into a tuple this is how you do it using the append operator okay so to the content of the email right now we have nothing in it now to this tuple i will add the value of email which is geeta at gmail.com so now to the email the first element geeta at gmail.com is loaded now the control will come back to 4 again next time value 1 will be loaded into i i will print email id of student 2 and again input function will be called where i can enter a new value from the keyboard i will enter it as sita at outlook.com so that will be stored into variable email and after that to existing the email i will add the value of email which is sita at outlook.com and then it will be loaded into the email so now the email gets the second value into it now the last time for loop will work this time i will enter the third email for hari that will be stored 
into the email so with this for loop i have accepted my input into tuple the email so now the email has three email addresses of three separate students now we have to separate username and domain name into two different tuples now before we go into that i will just print the detail of the email so whatever you have inside the email now will be printed out so we will see all the three email addresses printed out now after that you can see another for loop this is where we separate username and password and then store it into two different tuples so let us see how it is done so now before we start let me write the index values so gita at gmail is available at index zero sita at outlook is available at index two and hari at yahoo is available at index value three inside the email now for i in range zero to n so this will have three values zero one and two so zero will be loaded into i so initially i will have value zero i am calling an inbuilt function split which is actually used to separate a string based on the argument that you give inside i am calling this split on the value t email i so what is the value of i now that is zero so this statement will come like t email of zero dot split using the character at the rate so what happens here the split will get the value available at t email of zero so the value available at t email zero is the email address of gita so now it will be gita at gmail.com so that is the value stored in t email zero now split will find where in the string you have at the rate okay so split will identify this is where it has at the rate now split will separate this string by cutting through here so on the left side you have kita and on the right side you have gmail.com so now split will produce two separate string separated using at the rate symbol so that will come over here so split will create two strings kita comma gmail.com now gita will be loaded into username and gmail.com will be loaded into domain so now it's easy job right we have separated the username we have separated the domain into two separate variables after that i will use the tuple t user i will add the username to t user i will add the domain name to t domain so now t user will get the first value gita inside it t domain will get the first value gmail inside it now the control will come back to four again so the range values were zero one and two so zero is already done so now one will be loaded into i so one will be loaded into i so now t email i dot split at the rate will be t email one because value of i is one now split at the rate so now split will take the value available at t email index value one so i have written something wrong over here this is actually index value one and hari is available at index value two so now at index value one i have sita so now this string will be taken sita at outlook.com now split will search for this particular character which you have given inside for cutting the string into two pieces now it identifies the at the rate over here it will cut it now on the left side you have sita and on the right side you have outlook.com now sita will be stored into username and outlook.com will be stored into domain now sita will be attached to t user so t user will get sita now domain outlook.com will be loaded into t domain so now t domain has outlook.com now one last time for loop will work for hari at yahoo.com and username hari will be loaded to t user 
and domain yahoo will be added to t domain so now our output is ready so now i just have to print it now in the next print statement i will print t user so you will see Kita, sita and hari and in the last print statement you will print t domain so you will see gmail outlook and yahoo so now let us run this program all right so our program is ready we have created three empty tuples and after that using this for loop i took all the student emails into t email and using the next for loop i separate the username and domain and store it into two different tuples to use a t domain and finally i will print t user and t domain so now let me run the program now you can see initially it will ask for how many students right so i will enter three now this for loop will run three times asking for email addresses so as i have given i plus one here you can see even though the value of i is zero now it will ask email id of student one rather than showing student zero so now i will give the first email id as geeta at gmail.com now it is asking for the email id of the second student sita at outlook.com now the third student Hadi at yahoo.com right now when i press enter you can see our program is done now after taking input of three email ids using this for loop i am printing the content of t email that is why you see this line you can see all three students email id is recorded inside t email as a tuple you now using this for loop i separate the username and domain and then when i print t user you can see a tuple with usernames Eta, Sita and Hari and when I print the value of T domain you can see it contains only the domain name right we have splitted this email address using the character at the rate and loaded into two separate variables so using this technique you can split any string based on any character or a space whatever it is maybe the program is different maybe it will ask you to split on dot or maybe it will ask you to split on spaces so whatever is the question requirement you change the character over here right so right now it is at the rate but if you want to split with space you can give a space over here so based on space it will be cut and you can move the output to different tuples if you want okay so now let us continue now in this program we will learn how to search for a name in a given tuple which has many names inside it so we have a user defined function which actually does the search to find whether the name that we require is actually available inside the tuple so we will come to this function later so now let us start main program so first i'm going to create a blank tuple with name t name and after that i will ask how many student names that you want to enter so if i say three and then the program will print enter the names and using this for loop you can enter all those three names and each time the name that you enter will be added to t name so this is how we create our input tuple okay so for example i would say t name has value kita sita and hari we will use the same name that we have used before so now with this for loop i have entered one student name at a time and each time that student name is added to t name so now t name has these three student names inside it Kita, sita and hari and after that i will print t name so we will make sure that all the three names are available inside t name so it will be printed out and after that i will print which student name you want to search for example i would say i want to search for sita so value sita will be stored into variable n after that i will call my user defined function search with the tuple t name and the value sita which i want to search inside this tuple to check whether it is available inside it so now the control will come to my function call now the tuple t name will be moved into tuple one so now tuple one has value Gita, sita and hari inside it and the value inside n which is sita which we want to check will be moved into name so right now the value of name is sita okay so we want to find whether sita is available inside tuple one now to identify whether it is inside a tuple or not it's very easy using the membership operator in 
which we have studied before so it can be used along with if condition check so if name in tuple one if it returns true then the statement inside if will work if it return false then else part will work so right now you can see that the value of name is sita so if sita is in tuple one once you check the value you can understand sita is actually available inside tuple one so this is going to return true and then your program will print name that is sita is present in the tuple that you have given to search for now if i give another value over here for example john okay to search for so now the name will be john now if i check whether john in tuple one this will return false because i cannot find string john inside tuple one so the control will come to else part and there i will print john is not present in tuple one so now let us run this so now let us run the program so now it is asking how many students you can enter you have five or ten but then you have to enter 10 student name right but to save the time i will enter three i will enter Gita, sita and hari all right so now i press enter so now you can see using this for loop i have entered all the three names and after that i print the content of t names now it is asking which student name i have to search for right so here i will give i have to search for sita and i'll press enter now you can see the control has gone to our user defined function search and inside there i have found out that sita is in tuple one and that is why it is printing out sita is present in tuple one you can see here now if i run the program again now this time also i will enter three students the same students Gita, sita and hari and this time i will search for john and now you can see john is not present in the tuple so now we are going to wind up the session on tuple in the next video we will be starting with dictionary bye